good morning my dear students today we'll discuss flow of control it is another function of data link control method so as we discussed in the previous class line discipline which defines who should send data and when should send the data the second function of data link control is flow of control which defines how much data should be transferred from sender to receiver as as it reach to the data limits see the following definition of flow of control it is a set of procedures that tells the sender how much data can be transmitted before the data limits are reached at the receiver that means sender and receiver sender and the receiver both are having their own data capabilities so based on that the sender can send the data to the receiver and the receiving device has limited speed and limited memory to store the data why because for example you are sending 10 frames at a time but the receiver is a capable to store only 5 frames at a time that means there is a some loss of data frames so it can be controlled by flow of control methods there are two methods have been developed under flow of control one is stop and wait flow of control another one sliding window flow of control now we'll discuss these two stop and wait flow of control and sliding window flow of control so first of all we'll discuss what is stop and wait control so before we're discussing stop and wait control we need to know the definition and the advantages and disadvantages of, of the stop and wait then we'll discuss the stop and wait in diagrammat diagrammatically First we can see what is stop and wait. The sender wait for an acknowledgement after every frame is sent. That means in a tra data transmission sender will send the data or data frame from sender to destination or from sender to receiver at the time. Sender should be waited for an acknowledgement that is the receiver is received the data frame. And the second point is when acknowledgement is received then next frame is sent and continues up to the end of the transmission that means whenever sender is sending any acknowledgement whenever sender is sending any frame the receiver will receive and send an acknowledgement regarding about received frame after receiving that acknowledgement again sender will send the next frame so this process will be continued until the end of the transmission of all the frames from sender to receiver and the third point is one frame at one direction in the given time it can be sent that means whenever you are sending the data frame from sender to receiver only one frame at a time can be sent it from sender to receiver and within the given period of time and what is the advantage of this stop and wait so it is an easy method and each frame is checked and acknowledgement before the next frame is sent that is one of the best advantage of stop and wait that means there is no data frame loss why because each frame should be get some acknowledgement based on the acknowledgement next frame should be sent it. like frame 0 is sent it, acknowledgement is received frame 1 is sent it, acknowledgement is received like it will be continued if in the middle any frame doesn't receive of any acknowledgement again it will send the uh, unreceived acknowledgement frame and what are the disadvantage it is more inefficient why because each frame should be travel across the link to the receiver before the acknowledgement that means frame 0 is send it, acknowledgement is received before acknowledgement again you are sending the frame 1 at that time if the acknowledgement is not received then automatically frame 0 frame 1 both should be delayed or declined so that is the concept of stop and wait so we can explain through the diagram you can see here sender is a one station and receiver is the another station now i am sending for example i need to send the five frames so at a time i cannot send the five data frames each and every frame can be sent like sender is sending the frame zero with the sequence number and receiver is um, capture the frame and it will send the acknowledgement in the sequence order like frame zero acknowledgement zero and here between the fr accepting and receiving the frame and acknowledgement there is a time gap this time gap is called as a time out so here it will be represented by the waiting time so next again you are sending the one more frame you will get the acknowledgement one frame three frame two frame 
to acknowledgement frame 3 frame 3 acknowledgement like so on up to the end of the transmission nothing but the up to the five frames so here this gap between the frame and acknowledgement is called as a timeout or time period and next we'll discuss the another method of the flow of control is sliding window so as the name suggesting here whenever you are sending the data frame the data frame is represented in the window so first of all we we'll discuss the definition of the sliding window you can see sliding window is a nothing but it is a dynamic window which allows the sender to transmit a specified number of data frames or data units before an acknowledgement is received in the previous stop and wait only one frame at one direction in the given period of time but here at that time you can send a group of a group of or specified number of data frames before it will get any acknowledgement here the data can be or nothing but the data frame can be transmitted after getting acknowledgement but here even if it is not getting any acknowledgement you can send the data frames in the form of window and here it increases the efficiency of the transmitting more frames at the same time that means one frame one time stop and wait but here more frame in time so that leads to efficiency of the performance of the flow of control and the next one here pipelining technique is used to keep the link busy by frame must be transmitted that means for example one here we are sending five frames one two three four five frames for example one two two frames are received again it will be in the link with the third second frame again it will be linked with the third again it will be linked with the fourth that comes to the pipelining technique which is used to keep the link very busy that means in the middle it may not be um, it may not be connected or it may not be disconnected until and unless you will receive the complete window and this here you can see whenever you are going to working with the sliding window you must remember these three key points one is the sender have to know the information about size of the window that means how much data frame you, you are sending according to that the window can be adjusted for example I am, I am sending five frames at a time then the window size will be five and the second one is uh, last acknowledgement received for example i am sending five frames in one so it is getting one zero one two three four for example one data frame is received then automatically it will get the another information about the second link 